Hello everyone, my name is Mark and I'm a postdoc in the Barkulis lab at Imperial College London. Today I'm going to talk briefly about the work that we've done on investigating phenotypic robustness in the seam cells of C. elegans. So the development of organisms is marked by the production of consistent phenotypes in a population of animals. And often these consistent phenotypes are produced in the face of internal and external noise. Internal and external noise comes from a number of factors including genetic variation, external environmental inv variation and microenvironment or noisy environmental variation. And Waddington's idea of canalization is essentially the measure of this ability, more commonly known as robustness. And you can see here the ball that rolls down the hill into each of these grooves and the grooves at the bottom is the phenotype outcome. And the higher the ridges, the more robust the valleys are and the more likely the ball is to roll down this. And while phenotype Typic robustness has been studied in mainly unicellular organisms, such as yeast and E. coli, it's not been so well studied in multicellular organisms. However, C. elegans, the small nematode, is a, a good multicellular model to study phenotypic robustness and the effects of internal and external noise on phenotypes. Uh, because C. elegans is isogenic and the lineage of C. elegans is fully characterized, and therefore this allows for precise knowledge of single cell lineages and eliminates the confounder of genetic variation between individuals. So here we investigate the seam cells as a model of uh, phenotypic robustness. And the seam cells are a population of cells that reside in the epidermis of C. elegans. There's 10 cells on hatching down each lateral edge. Uh, and these go through rounds of asymmetric and symmetric divisions. You can see the lineage division for each cells here. Um, and then this expands the population to 16 per lateral edge um, at the end of larval development. And this number of 16 on each lateral edge is invariant between individuals in the population, making it a good model to uncover robustness. So what we did was we carried out a full genetic screen where we used EMS to mutagenize the worms. Uh, we had a reporter for uh, uh, seam cells, which was uh, seam GFP, and then we looked for um, mutant animals that either had more, less, or variable seam cell phenotypes. And I'm going to focus a bit on the variable seam cell phenotypes here. And the good thing about seam cell screens is that they're not saturated, so we can uncover um, novel candidates of seam cell regulation. And today, what I'm going to talk about is focusing on uh, briefly two genes that we identified that are highly conserved across the animal kingdom and that may have novel mechanisms in modulating phenotypic robustness in the seam cells. So First, we have a point mutation in NAF10. So on the left here, you can see the graph with the wild type uh, number animals um, near 16. And then you have the NAF10 EMS allele, which has a C to T change um, for the point mutation within the locus. And this causes a more variable uh, phenotype with a greater spread of terminal seam cell number. Um, and then we have uh, the precise replacement of this C to T change uh, in the CRISPR allele that phenocopies the mutation. And you can see the conversation in the bottom panel here, where you have this serine instead of the proline, and this proline is highly conserved all the way from yeast through multiple animals as well as C. elegans. So that's one of our candidates that we've identified. Um, and then the second candidate that we identified was BUS19. Um, BUS19 is an uh, ancient transmembrane protein uh, that's also highly conserved, and you can see this here. Um, it's conserved all the way up to humans uh, with TMN41A. And we found that when a uh, premature stop codon was introduced into the BUS19 locus, that there was a significant decrease in the number of seam cells as well as a greater spread of terminal seam cell numbers. So you had a greater level of variability. And so these two genes are good examples of mutations that we've uncovered that affect seam cell phenotypic robustness. And their conservation may also suggest that any mechanisms we uncover might be applicable to other systems where these genes have a role. And I'm just going to briefly describe uh, two putative mechanisms that we have some evidence for that may be driving the phenotypes of these mutant alleles. So for the n acetyltransferase NAF10, uh, we did some RNA-seq. And what we found was that there was a shift in the level of variation of global mRNA transcripts. So here in these two graphs, you have the coefficient of variation uh, plotted of mRNA transcripts. So you have 
the average normalized counts on the bottom, the coefficient of variation on the, the y, and you have high variation transcripts in blue, um, medium variation transcripts in black, and low variation in uh, orange. Now, what we found was that a smaller fraction of uh, genes were in the low variable category for the NAF10 loss function. So you can see this shift in the size of the orange portion in these two graphs. And before this may suggest that globally, uh, transcription may be more noisy within the NAF10 loss function. Um, and these are some aspects that we're currently following up and we find that there may be some changes to seam cell uh, genes as well as uh, to WIMP genes within these um, transcripts. And so this is one possible mechanism that we've been following up as a global increase in variation of transcript level. And then on the right here, you have um, an experiment showing the putative mechanism for uh, BUS19, where we've uh, had some evidence that alongside cuticle changes for the BUS19 mutant, we also had changes in uh, EGL18 uh, Wnt target um, mRNA transcripts. And so because BUS19 is a trafficking, a membrane trafficking protein, we looked at um, the localization of the Wnt receptor LIN17. And what we found was that the fluorescence intensity of LIN17 in the BUS19 RNAi which phenocopies the mutant is significantly less. And you can see this here in the confocal images where LIN17 is tagged with scarlet. Um, you can see that in the BUS19 RNA, there's a significantly less. And you can see the seam cells marked in turquoise here. <laughs> and so we think this might suggest that there's a novel role for BUS19 in the wind signaling of seam cells. So together, these results show two novel candidates for seam cell regulators um, that may potentially be modulating robustness and the noise within developing seam cells. Um, we obviously have a few more experiments to do for each project to uh, wrap up the mechanisms of these, but uh, they've both provided highly interesting uh, results. Um, and with that, I'll say thank you for listening and um, please feel free to email me any of your questions. I use my email, which is on the first slide or it's m.hints at ic.ac.uk.